I am happy to talk about um, using the Dyson system in managing our study about flash glucose monitoring in which we evaluated a newly developed education program. And I'm talking about the education program, the study results, and how we make use of Dyson as a yeah, managing system for all the data we got during the conduct of our study. So as you all know, with continuous glucose monitoring, there's a lot of data to be handled by, by patients and by clinicians. When we talk about SMBG measurement and five measurement points per day, the amount of data is pretty, well, simple. But with flash glucose monitoring or ISTGM, at least for the stored data, you get a sensor reading that is stored every 15 minutes, which transla translates to 96 values per day. And over the year, you accumulate 35,000 data points along with the, the store data. So every time the patient scans his sensor, of course, more data comes, comes to this um, amount and has to be handled. And there's a couple of new information and new aspects with ISCGM, or flash glucose monitoring. Of course, the trend information, the cause of glucose, we have new glycemic outcomes like time and range, time and hypo, glycemic variability that plays a big part now in our clinical targets and clinical management, and also the patient is confronted with these new parameters and has to deal with this kind of information overload with seeing um, trend errors and seeing the, the graphs on the, the reader and the devices and handling the estimated HbA1c and time and range and such stuff. And of course, we talk about glucose patterns that are possible to identify via the ambulatory glucose profile. So a lot of, to be handled by patients and clinicians. And this should answer the question why you should treat people using ISCGM or any CGM in order that they understand how to effectively use the new system and how to effectively handle all the data that has been generated by sensor-based glucose monitoring. So the handling is simply, of course, you just have to scan your, your sensor, you have to just you know, look at your reader, but there's a lot of skill and um, yeah, knowledge necessary to really effectively use those kind of data in terms of therapy adjustments and um, optimizing your therapy and understanding your therapy. Because if you use the, the wrong adjustments to, to trend errors, you can land in hypoglycemia, and that's something we, well, should prevent and teach our patients how to prevent and effectively prevent that and in order to gain optimized glycemic control. And this slide shows you a couple of the new aspects that um, came up within the last two to three years. Of course, we're dealing with graphs, we're dealing with the ambulatory glucose profile, we're dealing, dealing with new consensus statements that are being put out how to um, like the glucose management indicator, the estimated A1C with time and range of the 70% um, consensus time and range and lower than 4% time and hypoglycemia and all these clinical targets that we are now discussing and telling our patients that they should achieve. So that are also new aspects for educating patients. Educating patients, what does it mean to have 70% of your values in range or less than 4% in hypoglycemia that needs to be translated to the patient from publications such as these. So in order to cope with all these new aspects, we developed a structured education program, which we called FLASH, um, that specifically addresses people using FLASH glucose monitoring. And our goal was to provide education, provide information, and train people how to use trend errors, how to interpret the course of glucose, how to use the information for therapy adjustments or treatment decisions, how to read and analyze and use um, AGP or the ambulatory glucose profile. And the objective of this education program is really to reduce worries and to increase safety and treatment safety and uh, the feelings of safety when dealing with these new outcomes. And what we also want to achieve is really improving patient's empowerment, a feeling of empowerment, because understanding your glucose values and understanding the, the AGP is really making sense of your own data, making sense of your own therapy, and that is by itself empowerment and self-management. And one big part of empowerment is recognizing your own patterns in glucose and responding to those patterns and identifying possible problems with your therapy and making the right adjustments. So that is 
to so that are the, the main objectives of the, the Flash Education Program. It comprises four lessons that um, last uh, 90, minutes, 90 minutes each, so it's a really comprehensive and structured process of educating people and training people uh, how to use Flash Glucose Monitoring and especially the AGP. And we did a randomized controlled trial to evaluate the efficacy of our newly developed education program with um, a classical randomized control design with a two-week baseline phase that we randomize people either to receiving the education or not receiving the education. But all our participants in the study use flash glucose monitoring. One group with the education, the other group just flash glucose monitoring without the education. And then we have a little... Um, follow-up assessment at the end of the education and six months after the education, another follow-up period. And the reason why I'm standing here at the Glucor and Diasand booth is that we use Diasand for managing the study. Because when we talk about lots of data, it means lots of data also for the researcher. When you talk about um, 96 values per day per participant and we included 216 participants in our study, that means every day we're dealing with 10 21,000 glucose data points. With a two-week phase, we're talking about 291,000 data points. And over the, over the course of our study, with three measurement points, each lasting two weeks, nearly a million glucose data points. So that's a lot to be handled in a, in a study. And for us, it was really crucial that we have access to all this raw data and that we run our analysis with um, the flash glucose data that we received via Diasend. And of course we're running a study, so keeping the anonymity of each patient was a, a major or main aim for us in, in choosing Diasend because we didn't have to use clear names or email addresses of our participants, but could anonymize the data in a way. And especially we want to we wanted to have one platform with all the data. We didn't want to use different platforms where we collect data, but just one platform in which we could, would be able to organize all the data, download all the data, and really managing, online managing the study, seeing if um, patients really uploaded the data. If not, we could um, contact them and encourage them to do so. So the central management aspect, aspect was really um, important for us. But another thing about the Diasend platform uh, that is or was um, crucial for our study is that it offers an education tool in itself by summary reports, by providing people with the ambulatory glucose profile. So it's not only a study management tool, but also enriches the educational process. And this is um, one example of um, how we did it. This is the, the, the clinic account we used. Um, in which we well, didn't put the name in, but the, the acronym of our study and a, a, just a, a person code. I mean, we have the overview of all of our participants and last glucose obviously tells you when was the last time any glucose data was uploaded. So in the course of a study, we could really monitor adherence to study protocol in terms of upload of the data. So that's a really um, big aspect that made life easier for us in collecting all this data. And the usefulness of Dyson, as I mentioned, lies in terms of study conduct with the central clinic account, with an easy downloadable commis-separated value file, which we then could translate in a statistical program and run our analyses. It was also easy to upload data for participants, so we didn't have to explain a lot to them. They just installed the, um, the uploader and with the cable, it was an easy upload, and especially with the cloud-to-cloud -cloud transfer that is now possible, it, it will be easier for future studies. But also the education process, as you can see with the, the AGP, with the um, tools you see here, when patients upload their data, they have immediate access to summary reports, and they could see the data, and they, when they're being educated about how to read the ambulatory glucose profile, and then they upload it in terms of the study, they can really use their knowledge that they have learned in our flash education program um, online um, on the Diasend platform. So in terms of efficacy of our education program, this is the result on 
um, HBO and C are primary outcome. So you can see, really see that six months after our education, we achieved a significantly greater improvement of HBA and C. So structured education is really a tool to improve um, glycemic control with flash glucose monitoring users compared to no education but only using flash glucose monitoring. And the absolute difference is around 0.3 percentage point. So that's really the, the effect of the education um, program that we see in, in, in other type 1 studies as well. Apart from HBO and C, we also improved time and range. So six months after the education, significant improvement in time in, in the values um, of time and range. As we are psychologists who developed this program, psychosocial outcomes were also important, reducing the burden of diabetes, reducing the burden of this information overload that has been you know, a big part of CGM um, systems. And again, we see positive effects of the education program on diabetes distress. So we were able to reduce diabetes-rated burden with our education program. And that was a, a huge deal for us, as we say, a quality of life, diabetes distress is one of a, a main therapy goal. We also increased the satisfaction with the glucose monitoring method. So by providing education and making people use their tool, their CGM tool more effectively, they became more satisfied with it. Another um, huge effect we had on actual behavior. So we when you ask participants after six months, how often do you use trend errors for making therapy adjustments, something they hadn't used uh, at the baseline measurement. They, they see a trend error, but they can't understand what it means. They don't use this for making therapy adjustments. Six months after education, there was a significant effect on the actual use of trend errors for therapy adjustments. As you can see, the daily, the um, percentage of participants who said that they daily use um, trend errors significantly uh, increased compared to the control group. So actual behavioral um, differences for our education program. And especially relevant, again, for the for analytical tools for softwares like Diasend, is that, again, six months after the education, participants of the flash education use such software tools more often than the control group. So really taught them how to make use of their, uh, of the possibilities of uploading the data, and making sense of the data, and analyze, analyzing and using summary reports and using the AGP so again, this is a huge behavioral effect in, in participants that never use such a system, 61% in the control group and only 30% uh, in the flash group. And we see one to three times per month, there was a big um, effect on the usage of analytical tools, which makes sense because we tell patients, well, in order to systematically analyze your data, you should look at a time window of 14 days, 10 to 14 days. So two times per month or one to three times per month is really the, the, the crucial um, time frame to analyze the data with those systems. In summary, um, I want to make three points. First of all, I think diabetes education and structured education is really crucial in order for patients to effectively use the CGM devices in terms of trend errors, understanding the, the glucose information, the plethora of data that has been generated by CGM systems, making use of the AGP and summary reports. Our flash education program is the, the first structured and evaluated, uh, evaluated program which had significant effect on glycemic parameters, psychosocial parameters, and behavioral parameters. And, of course, systems such as the Dyson system offer an optimal integration of um, the educational tool um, with, you know, training in real life. It's not just you sit in a course and you, you listen to a diabetes educator training you how to use trend errors. It's what matters is that you transfer that knowledge to your daily life and using that information that you gathered in the structured diabetes education course in your daily life. So uploading your data on a system such as Diazend and using this information in those summary reports is really an optimal integration of the education process and the real life process about learning uh, about particular um, glucose data. So it's an 
we can enrich education. It's an excellent link between the patient and the healthcare provider in terms of forwarding summary reports, forwarding AGP analysis, and again using these in, in, in other educational sessions and really enriching um, the quality um, of glucose management. So in essence, diabetes education doesn't stop with participation in the course, but it's really an ongoing process, especially with CGM devices. And structured education in uh, combination with such analytical tools, with such software tools, also what the reader provides in terms of summary reports or um, um, cloud solutions often in terms of summary reports, it's really a perfect integration to continuously learn about diabetes therapy. And with this statement, I'd like to thank Luke and Eisen for having me to present you the, the results of the study and to provide the support uh, for the conduct of the study. And I'm wishing you all a nice ESD and a nice time in Barcelona. And thank you for listening. <laughs>